All right, welcome to what is going to be episode 127 of Podcast PD. This is the little piece of the show that doesn't make it into the podcast as AJ and I get started here on a Sunday night. We're clicking buttons and we're going to get going. If you're joining us in the chat, let us know where you're joining from. And we've got a great conversation and a great guest coming up. All right. Are you ready? Ready to go. Let's do it. All right. Coming up on episode 127 of Podcast PD, podcasts are great for PD, but if you're not teaching with podcasts, you're missing out. On this episode, we are chatting with world traveler and podcaster Gary Arndt, host of Everything Everywhere Daily. Let's start the show. This is Podcast PD, the show that provides you with anytime, anywhere professional development. Our conversations and guests will provide you with the learning you might get in a faculty meeting or on a PD day, except you're going to have more fun with AJ Bianco and me, Chris Nessie. Let's start the show. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, podcast PD people. Welcome to episode 127. It's me, Chris, and I'm joined by my partner in crime, the podcast Paisano. AJ, what's going on, man? Christopher, how are you? I'm very excited for uh, our episode. I am super excited, as some of our friends might say on their podcast. And uh, yeah, we got a big one today. We, we, we have been talking podcasting and doing this show since, what, 2015, 2016? Yep. And we were always talking to educators in a traditional sense. Mm -hmm. And we've had some other content creators on the show before. But tonight, today, we have Gary Arndt, the host of a podcast I recommended very recently. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everything Everywhere Daily, a fantastic podcast that is, you name the subject, he's probably done an episode about it. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, just from our little pre-chat here. Yes. <laughs> we were talking about M&Ms and uh, Van Halen and... Uh, Possible Houdini. Queens. Yeah. Yes, electricity. It, it was... It, I'm, I'm excited. I am very excited for this. Yeah. And look, I know you're excited because you are a daily listener. I, I've, I've, I've listened to many episodes. I might not listen as often as you do um, just based on you know, how we're listening and all that, but, you know, listening to the episodes that we, that we can, and that we have chosen and that, that, you know, he has put out there. Fantastic. And I think the best thing about this, you know, this kind of brings us back to our roots and, uh, you know, a little shout out to Stacy if she ever listens. You know, this is like why Podcast PD was started, right? The, the podcast, the podcasts that you need for yourself to help you grow as an educator, and then you can bring to your classroom and find ways, you know, to 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 use podcasts the right way, and not just something that we do. So this brings it back to the roots. I'm really excited to see where this is going to go. Yes, and uh, I guess just a couple of weeks ago now, we we only do the show monthly now, uh, but we did have an anniversary in the middle of the month which is when podcast PD started. So yes, shout out to Stacy, uh, the, uh, the godmother of podcast PD. There you go. That that's an appropriate title, right? I, I guess so. Godmother. Yeah, sure. Wave the wall uh, and make it happen. Yeah, that that's it. We, we bestow that upon her. <laughs> All right. So today we have a very special guest joining us. And again, he is the host of the incredibly popular podcast, everything everywhere daily. Uh, since Gary launched his podcast in July of 2020, when so many podcasts were being launched, uh, Everything Everywhere Daily has amassed, ready for this, AJ, over 13 million total downloads, awesome. averaging a million downloads per month. It consistently ranks in the top 25, both on Spotify, Apple. It's a very popular podcast. Uh, and in just about 10 minutes, you can learn something new every single day on a wide range of subjects, including history, science, geography, math, technology, and everything in between. Gary is a true polymath, drawing on his extensive ex research in multiple fields and his decade-long experience traveling the world. He brings a wealth of knowledge and his unique perspective to every episode he produces. And we are excited to welcome him to Podcast PD. Welcome to the show, Gary Arndt, host of Everything Everywhere Daily. 
Gary, you're classically muted. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's for the effect. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I said when you first got on the call, Gary, I am fanboying because I first was introduced to your podcast through Dave Jackson on the School of Podcasting, where you did a whole interview with Dave, and uh, Dave's a good podcast friend of mine, and I've been listening ever since, and then, and now this is where you're really cool. You've got people. They just happen <laughs> to reach out to us and probably some other podcasts, and I was like, I listen to Gary's podcast. I would love to have him as a guest. So thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I, I enjoy it. It's a, the, what, what you guys are doing is something I'm, I'm really interested in well, uh, using podcasts for education. Yeah, we, we, we talk about all sorts of topics here related to trying to give teachers professional development. We kind of market this show as uh, the PD you could get in your faculty meeting, but we're a whole lot more fun than, you know, Ben Stein standing up in front of you lecturing. <laughs> All I right. bet Gary has an episode about Ben Stein. Or one of the marks. Yeah, right? <laughs> uh, not about Ben Stein, but that's a problem <laughs> that a lot of podcasts have. And the reason why there are so many that are, that are really bad. Um, my background, I have an extensive background in speech and debate. Hmm. I was one of the top competitors in high school in the country. Uh, I was recruited to debate in college. I placed in the top 10 in the national tournament uh, my junior and senior years of college. I was then a coach. I had one of the most successful high school teams in the country. Uh, and when you're speaking, really, I'm, I'm reading a script and I'm doing a performance. The research and everything else is, you know, historical and intellectual and academic. But when I'm reading it, uh, you have to make it interesting as well. And a lot of people, is, uh, they hear the Ben Stein approach and it's like, all right, in 1847, this, you know, and it's just really monotone and it bores people. So you can, you know, write something as interesting as you want, but if you don't deliver it in an interesting way, because this is an audio medium, uh, it's probably going to fail. Gary, before we get into the meat and potato topic of using podcasts for teaching and using a show such as yours, really at any level, uh, can you talk a little bit about how you make your show what kind, what goes into it you alluded to this a little bit before we hit record but give our audience a taste of what it takes to produce your daily podcast so i write a script for every show and the show in each script is about 2000 words uh sometimes a little more sometimes a little less so i like to tell people that basically my job every day is i write a term paper um that's pretty much what i'm doing so if you ever have any kids that complain about it they have no sympathy for me, none whatsoever, because I got to do it every day. Uh, and I keep a running. So when I started the show, what I did is I wrote down 100 ideas for episodes. And that list uh, that I have on Google Docs has just evolved over time. Every time I have an idea, I just put something down. And when I do a show, I take something off. And it has now grown. There's a little under 900 episode ideas that I have. And the way it usually works is one episode begets another episode or more. Uh, of different ideas. And that's just uh, kind of how it works. And I've had people say like, oh, aren't you worried about running out of ideas? It's like, no, the name of the show is Everything Everywhere. I literally can talk about anything and I pretty much have at this point. So uh, there, there's really no limit to what I can do. Uh, the only uh, things that I've had difficulty with in times is when I, I'll do, uh, the show is mostly history, but it's also geography, uh, science, and some mathematics. And I have a degree in math and that's very difficult to do without being able to demonstrate things visually. So I had an episode on infinity. And one of the things is there's a thing called Kantner's diagonal proof. It doesn't involve any advanced math at all. You can explain it uh, on a napkin, but you do need to kind of show something how it works. And, and the point of the proof is that there are some infinities larger than other infinities which blows people's mind because, you know, infinity is the biggest thing there is. And you can easily show it. It's something that can be grasped by, by people, you know, kids in high school, uh, but it's something they've never thought about before. And when you do it and it kind of just shows them how a proof in mathematics works without any numbers, without any symbols or anything else. So that was a bit difficult, but I, I, I think I pulled it off and, and certain math shows like that can be hard. But um, yeah, the process is basically I, I have to have an idea of what the show is going to be about when I come up with the idea. And then 
Uh, it goes on the list. So if I pick something, it's like kind of whatever moves me that day. And that's why I do the show on. Gary, what inspired you to launch your podcast? Oh, desperation. That's easy. So in 2007, I sold my home. I've been tra- I was traveling around the world basically uh, until the pandemic started. Uh, I didn't even have a home for over a decade. I was just living out of a suitcase. In the process, I visited over 200 countries and territories. I've been to every U.S. state twice, almost every national park, which I would have done if it wasn't for the pandemic. Uh, but the pandemic destroyed everything. Uh, I, my, my, basically, most people knew me for travel photography before this started uh, because I, I won pretty much every major travel photography award. But that all ended with the pandemic. All my contracts, all my plans, everything dried up. Traffic to my website dried up. Nobody was buying travel. Nobody was interested in it. And the thing with travel is people only care about it when they're about to go on a trip. You don't follow it in the way that you follow sports or politics or technology or things like that. There's always something new happening. There's nothing new happening in the world of travel. The Coliseum, it's going to be there tomorrow. It's not going to change that much. Uh, and it was there a hundred years ago. It's going to be there in a hundred years in the future. Uh, so it's, it, it was, there was kind of frustrating and it also, the, the business changed due to social media and Google and Facebook kind of ruined it where it just became this SEO driven thing where people were writing to answer Google queries, not necessarily. And, and the problem is once you've asked a question, like what are the best things to do in Las Vegas? You already know you're going to Las Vegas. But when I talk to people personally, I get the question a lot. It's like, oh, where should I, where should I go? And people only usually have a very small set of places they even know about to visit. So for example, someone wants to go to the Caribbean, the place they usually think of is Jamaica or some other place with large resorts. And the place I always tell them is go to the island of Dominica. Most people have never heard of Dominica. It's an independent country. It is the least visited country in the Western hemisphere. But the reason it's the least visited country is because there's no place where they can put a large airport. And because they can't put a large airport anywhere, big planes can't fly in from Europe or the United States, you have to fly to a neighboring island of Guadeloupe or uh, St. Lucia nearby and then take a ferry or another small plane. It's not hard to do, you know, 30 minutes, but no one does it because it's just easier to go to one of the other islands. And so nobody visits Dominica. Yet there are 365 islands, or 365 rivers, I should say, a beautiful, beautiful island, and hardly anybody goes there. But you can't do that on a website. I mean, I, I can write an article, but people aren't going to find it unless they're searching for it. And if they're searching for it, they kind of already know. So something like a podcast, switching to that, I can develop a following of people who hopefully will, will want to hear what I have to say every day. And you can you can reach people in a way that you can't do it by just having a website. And that's kind of why I did it. If that makes sense. Makes perfect sense. It, it, and again, from, from being a fan of your show and listening to shows like yours, you know, it, it takes skill and talent to be able to paint that picture with words. And I, I think you do a phenomenal job of that. I mean, you, you definitely bring history to life and, you know, you say you have a degree in mathematics, but it seems that you have such a passion for the past. Well, yeah. So I, I got majors in my undergrad in mathematics, economics, and political science. And then in my thirties, after I sold a business, I went back to school and got degrees in geology and geophysics. Uh, history has just been a hobby, but it's a, it's a hobby that, uh, you know, most of the great history podcasters do not have degrees in history. Dan Carlin doesn't. He was a broadcaster. Mike Duncan doesn't. Uh, None of these people do. They're just enthusiasts who love history and have read a lot about it. And that's really all you need. Now, I know there are professional historians out there that will, you know, blow a gasket at someone saying something like that, but it's true. Uh, You know, I once had this one historian that got really upset because I wasn't providing footnotes in uh, in my episodes. I'm like, dude, it's a podcast. It's not a research paper that in, in he's thinking of everything just in his world of how they do it. I'm like, I have nine year olds who listen to this in the car with their parents. It's not something that's going to be presented at an academic conference. That's not how it works. I want to tell the story and I'm not particularly worried about who I'm citing. And the reason why this guy was upset is because I did an episode on 
a topic that he wrote his PhD thesis on. And he felt it was his intellectual property. I'm like, no, it's a story. <laughs> right. If I were to plagiarize you and take your text word for word, then you'd have a good case. But simply telling the general story of what happened, it's history. It's a fact. It happened. You can't, that's not how it works. It happened even if you never did your dissertation about it. I like that point. <laughs> did, did that <laughs> silence this person? <laughs> yes. I wrote a big thing about, you know, how when we talk about Julius Caesar, we don't, you know, quote uh, the Roman historians that we get a lot of the stuff from. We just quote it as, as something that happened. Or I could, you know, we could talk about any event in history and just talk about it without having to provide footnotes for everything. Now, if you're doing original historical academic research, that's a different field. That's a different venue. And you do have to provide sources and you are doing it. That's a different thing. I'm providing something for public consumption and I'm just trying to entertain and educate. And let's face it, my show is only 10 minutes long. So I'm really just providing a, I'm trying to encapsulate everything. And hopefully then people will use that as a starting point to go do research on their own, which I get a lot of people that, that give me feedback that that's exactly what they do. You know, I did an episode, an episode once on the uh, history of the Mongol empire in 10 minutes. And that's very hard to do. You know, I did the history of the city of Paris, starting with, you know, it, it's pre-Roman days uh, to today. And again, that's, it, it, you got to leave a lot out when you do that. So, yeah, a lot of those historical episodes, I mean, you could spend a lifetime researching single episodes of topics you've covered and that could be someone's life. Oh, and, I, and I, that's what I tell people, you know, it's, there are people that have spent their careers on what I'm going to cover in 10 minutes. So, you know, and, and I, I make no bones about it and it's obviously has to be the case and, and something that's short. And one of the decisions I made, you talked about the decision to do it. My original decision was not to do a show like this. It was to do something closer to hardcore history that was longer, more in-depth episodes. But I realized it was a horrible business model. That unless you can get Dan Carlin type numbers, doing an episode every two weeks, even if it's very long, doesn't work very well. And then I realized, so pretty much every successful history podcast goes super in-depth on one topic. And they'll have hundreds of episodes on one thing. I thought, well, okay, well, what if I did the opposite? What if I took the shotgun approach and did small episodes frequently about everything? And... Uh, that's kind of what I did. And I figure if, if, if I was, if these were things I was interested in, there's gotta be other people out there that are interested in as, as well. And that's what I did. And in the world of podcasting, you'll often hear about, you have to have an avatar in mind. My avatar is me. This is just stuff I find interesting. And there's other people out there that I think will. And, and, you know, anecdotally, when I, when I hear people in my audience, it's just all over the map. It's truck drivers, mail carriers, teachers, children, people in old folks' home, guy in the Philippines runs it nonstop in his restaurant. Um, <laughs> yeah. a taxi drivers will run it and then they'll get into conversations with their passengers about what a, what's being said. So it's all over the place. And I trying to define what, you know, the average or, you know, another question, uh, thing people say is, oh, we should find out what episodes people like the best and do more of those. Well, I've tried doing that and nobody gives me the same answer. It's all over the place. Some people like ancient history. Some people like World War II. Some people like the episodes on cities and rivers. Some people like the, the series I did on the planets and talking about astronomy. I can't find any commonality because quite frankly, there just isn't in the show and, and everyone's going to find something different. And what I always tell people is uh, you're going to see episodes appear and there'll be some that you're maybe familiar with the topic and some that you've never heard of before. And it's the ones that you've never heard of. That's where you're going to actually learn something. So I did one a few days ago on uh, last week on Songkran. And I had people in the Facebook group like, I, I don't know what Songkran is. Songkran is the, is the Thai New Year. And it's a big celebration throughout the country where the whole country basically turns into a water fight for three days. And uh, it's something that if you haven't been to Thailand, you probably wouldn't be aware of. Uh, but those are the kind of episodes you have to listen to to, to learn the most. And, you know, for people who maybe because of this episode, they go and they check it out and they hopefully subscribe for sure. Uh, they'll notice, and, and I've noticed, that, and you've even admitted, there's really no rhyme or reason that I can see as to why certain episodes come out 
or what topics you cover. I mean, you can see, you know, like April Fool's Day came out on April 1st and you've got some episodes that they make sense on certain days and certain months. Um, but it, it looks like, you know, you literally, I mean, everywhere, everything just kind of go. I try to keep it goes. random. Uh, I try to keep it random on purpose. So if I did something on ancient history within the last, you know, week or two, I will try to avoid that. Um, certain things end up becoming like a series and I try to maybe do one a month on that topic. So yeah. like I did one initially on the Nile river and then I was like, well, I get to do this on every major river in the world. So I've ended up doing it on the Congo, the Mississippi and the Amazon. And I'll end up doing it on the Yangtze, the Indus, the Ganges, uh, the Danube and some other rivers as well. And then I started doing a series with um, cities. So I did the history of Venice and the history of Paris. Uh, I did an actually a much earlier episode on the history of New York and how it, uh, New York as we know it today only was created about a hundred years ago. It was actually five different cities. Uh, the boroughs were, Brooklyn was its own city and it was actually one of the largest cities in the United States. And then they merged, became boroughs and, and that's how that happened. So um, yeah, I kind of try to spread it apart and I do try to keep it. And the reason I keep it random here, there's a method to the madness. So much of our lives are determined by algorithms. Facebook, social media, Google, everything has an algorithm to try to give you what you think you want to see or hear. The problem is, is it eliminates serendipity. Just finding something by accident. Uh, because I was involved in debate, I spent a lot of time in libraries and I would just wander around reading periodicals and I would come across things. And a lot of serendipity has disappeared from the internet because everything is algorithmically driven. My show is not. And so it's a place where serendipity, you can learn about things that you didn't even know that you didn't know. And that will probably not happen in many other places online for the reasons I gave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just thinking how, you know, AJ, we have tools at our disposal like Wakelet, where now I can see myself over the summer as I look at my world history curriculum putting together wakelet boards with episodes related to the topics I teach and, you know, putting together, you know, my own resources as a teacher where using a podcast like Gary's to kind of pull it all together. Now, Gary, you well, it's, are... it's, it's interesting that you mention that because there, I, I've had people suggest that I, that I try to, I have over a thousand episodes now that I try to like put together, um, different similar episodes about similar topics, whether it's about Roman history or World War II or the Civil War, um, to, to make it easier for people that just want to maybe explore one area like that. Um, and creating something to make it easier for teachers is something I'd be very interested in doing if there's enough uh, interest out there. I've only had a few people uh, express interest, history teachers, using it as a, as a curriculum. Um, I know there's a lot of parents that listen with their kids. Because I do keep the show, what I like to say, as clean as history will allow. If there was the concubine or Emperor Hadrian had a lover, I can't do anything about that because that happened. But you know, I don't curse or you know go out of my way to to find topics that are sensational or prof profane or anything like that. Right, and that is a that's a huge plus, especially um, as we think about the world we live in and. You know, there's different parts of this country where different teaching materials and resources are coming under fire. And that that's a huge plus for your content is that it is it is family friendly. It could be played in the classroom. I could play it in front of a first grader. I've turned my 11 year old son onto your podcast and, you know, it, it, it is clean and it's relevant to him. And, you know, my ninth graders get value out of it. I've recommended it to college students that that I teach. You know, and I recommended it here on this show for, you know, the adult listener. Um, and uh, I should also add I, my own personal theory of learning is that when you when you break everything down, there are two things and only two things you need to learn. You need to be literate and you need to be curious. If you are those two things, especially in a world where all the information is at our fingertips, you will learn. Whether or not you're in school, regard, I mean, you can't stop someone who wants to learn and has access to things. I think we do reasonably well in literacy. Most people can read. 
we fail in curiosity. And you probably see this as teachers. There's a lot of kids that just don't care. And in my own kind of small way, in my own corner of the internet, that's, that, that's what I'm kind of trying to do. And you get kids that are interested in some topic or whatever, and uh, you know they can just go off on that tangent. Uh, I'm sure we've all growing up had things that we were interested in, became mini experts on, whether it was baseball or you know some musical group or whatever, where you become obsessed by it and you learn everything there is to know. Um, if we can expand the scope of what people become obsessed about, then that's kind of how you learn. And it's, it's this, this alternate pathway system of achieving knowledge that may not be linear, but it can still work very well. Now, actually, Gary, based on that, are there episodes that you have made or episodes on your list of potential episodes that it's not particularly a topic you're interested in and you're still going to do an episode on it? Or are you interested in all the topics that you've covered and will cover? No, I'm interested in them. Uh, the, the, uh, the, there's certain holes in areas I haven't covered, but that more has to do with my knowledge, not my interest. I have not done as much with Chinese history as I probably should have. And that simply is because I don't know as much about Chinese history. Um, I've done several episodes on Arab history and the history of the Islamic Caliphate. Um, I could probably afford to do more of those African history. Uh, the problem is a lot of it just isn't written. So, you know, I've done episodes on great Zimbabwe and, uh, a, a couple other dealing with sub-Saharan Africa. But again, it's, it's just hard to find a lot of detail. You get more starting around a hundred or about 200, 200 years ago when things became documented. Um, and there are some things I just don't want to touch because they're controversial. For example, I can do an episode on the assassination of James Garfield or William McKinley. No problem. But if I did one on John F. Kennedy, anything I say is going to bring people out of the woodwork to complain. So right. I probably am not going to do an episode on that. Now, Gary, part of your podcast, which I really like, is you you have built community around your podcast. You've got Discord. You've got Facebook. Uh, you read a review or two in each episode. So you are connecting with the people who listen. I'm sure you've connected with some educators who have reached out to you with, you know, appreciation. Um, but can you speak to how you're aware of teachers using your podcast in education in their classrooms? Uh, the first teacher to reach out to me was at the IMG Academy in Florida, which is like the Academy for jocks. Like it's a sports <laughs> Academy. Yeah. And uh, when they reached out, I gave them a shout out in the show. And if there's anyone listening who's a teacher that uses this, just let me know and I'll give your class a shout out in, at the end of one of the, the shows. Um, but I, I know that there are people doing it. Like there's a guy locally I know who's a history teacher. And he told me after the fact that he was using some of my episodes, but he didn't really tell me. So I think if there are people doing it, they're doing it without letting me know. I know that there are parents who are like homeschooling their kids that are using it kind of as part of the curriculum. Um, it, it, I'm so busy doing the shows every day and I have no one helping me. That's the other thing. I'm doing it all, right, but I haven't been able to. Army. <laughs> yeah. Well, for now, I'm, I, hopefully I can hire someone soon. Um, but uh, so I, I don't really have anyone working kind of that angle. And I, I would really like to, uh, I would like to put something together that's easier for teachers because I do think podcasting can be a very powerful way to get kids interested because you can fill the gaps. Like if they're, if they take a bus to school, it's very easy to get in a 10 minute podcast and uh, get the, the cliff notes gist of, of whatever a topic is or a story is. And it's a way to fill in that time uh, whether they're going for a walk or riding their bike or whatever it is they're doing, or, or even, you know, uh, I have an Amazon Alexa, one of those little tiny ones uh, in my bathroom. And when I'm in the shower, I will tell it to um, play stuff. And so there's all sorts of opportunities you can put in podcasting that you can't for a book or a video. And I think that's one of the, the powerful things about it. AJ, you awake? <laughs> i'm fascinated by this like i like i told you from jump like 
listening listening to him to gary's episode and, and what he has to say and how he creates the episode i'm just floored so i'm taking it all in but i i like the idea of finding those student specific episodes because look you know I'm, I'm a middle school vice principal and my kids don't care about anything unless it's personal to them so finding the episodes that are really going to be meaningful to the students that's what's going to get them interested right so having a teacher come up to you and say hey my students are really into in the first thing my mind unfortunately is tiktok so like here's an episode on tiktok right so i know like that's that's not an easy one to do because it's it's brand new but it's a technology that that is definitely out there that that students would gravitate toward so i i wonder if there's ways that you could find specific topics that would be geared toward the student body instead of the overall public it's hard i know i'm just just wondering. i don't know if i would do an episode on tiktok but i would do an episode like on the history of social media uh, that's a bit more broader. I'm not going to do it on one company because I, I, the other thing I stay away from is current events because that is the easiest. You know, if you look at a lot of podcasts, people tend to throw in snide remarks about whoever the president is or something like that but that are not part of the show. And you see it in the comments. And I, I think it turns a lot of people off. And I, I've had people tell me, it's like, I have no clue how you voted. And I'm like, good. That's the point. Uh, and so something, even something like TikTok, I, I, it's in the news constantly right now. And it's something that I'd kind of want to stay away from. Um, but I, the history of the internet, the history of social media are things that probably, you know, I could give TikTok a mention in something like that, but I don't think I would do it on that. Actually, uh, speaking of topics, you had mentioned uh, at the beginning that you started with a list of about 100 topics that you could make right. episodes on. Have you covered all 100 original ideas or they're still talking no i have not touched yet okay uh because some of the ideas were rather difficult and they took me they took time um and, and i was kind of always been leery of of doing them just because i i kind of thought they were some of the more difficult ideas uh just to give you an idea some of the first ones um the year babe ruth hit 104 home runs i still have not done that um we, we'd both be interested in that one <laughs> oh, so basically it was, it's a, a guy wrote a book by that title, the year he hit 104 home runs. And I think it was his 1920 season. Officially, he didn't hit 104 home runs, but he then said, well, the, the rules at the time were as if the ball went over the fence and curved foul after it left the fence, it was considered a foul ball. So he had a whole bunch of home runs that were, were, were not counted because of that rule. Then the, uh, the Yankees played exhibition games against other professional against major league teams those didn't count then he had you know barnstorming spring training and all this stuff and it's like he added all the stuff and he got everything it's like he had 104 home runs that year not all of them in official games but and and just it's it's really just a segue to get into the story of babe ruth who is an incredible personality and a lot of i i suppose a lot of contemporary americans don't know much about him especially the kids and People outside of the United States, which I do have a significant audience, uh, Babe Ruth doesn't have the same weight and impact as he would in the United States. So that was one of the episodes, uh, the quasi war with France. Uh, we never had a war with France, but we kind of almost sort of did. Um, I had one, you know, uh, the downside of agriculture. I was actually considering doing this like, you know, agriculture has brought a civilization. That's a good thing. What a lot of people don't realize is the general health of people got much worse in the several thousand years after agriculture developed. Uh, you saw things like various diseases, obesity, never, you know, there, there's fat mummies in Egypt. Uh, tooth decay never appeared until the rise of agriculture. Uh, life expectancies actually went down. People became more fecund and populations went up, but the average quality of life for an individual may have actually gone down. Uh, so that's an episode I wanted to do. Um, Sergei Korolov, who was the brains behind the Russian space program, and they kept his name secret for years and nobody knows about him. Uh, Lee Kuan Yew, the founder of Singapore. 
uh, the tool saying prison in Cambodia, uh, Rasputin, uh, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? That would be a whole different other one. So there's there's a bunch of these. And these were all in the initial 100. I haven't done yet. And one of the ones that was in the initial 100 was uh, the domestication of dogs. I eventually did that. And how horses spread through native people in North America. It all came from a single ranch in New Mexico. And you can actually see maps of how they traded the horses and bred them and spread. And people who had never seen horses within a generation were becoming some of the best uh, mounted cavalry in the world. And that's a fascinating story, which also led to the next episode idea of doing one specifically on the Comanche people who have a story very unlike any other native people in, in North America. So yeah, there's lots of them. And one thing goes to another and goes to another. Hence the everything part everywhere. <laughs> right. Well, the um, name everything everywhere I picked back in 2006 as the name for my travel blog. And since then, in 2010, British Telecom and Orange Mobile in, in the UK merged to form a new company called Everything Everywhere. And then the movie came out that won the Academy Award with that name. Um, so, but I had it first. So nice. <laughs> and I've, I've had people say they found the podcast listening for something about the movie or trying to find it. So, hey, however they Some find benefits. you, right? Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> uh, Gary, do you have, and I know you've done, a lot of episodes do you have a singular favorite episode or maybe maybe the better question is a particular topic that you really enjoy diving into uh i probably do a lot of stuff about ancient rome more than would probably be indicated simply because i i find it interesting and it, it's a time in ancient history for which we have a lot of information we don't know as much about ancient Egypt because what we have is basically written on in hieroglyphs on stones and it, they're more inscriptions, but we have the first person account of Julius Caesar. Granted it's mostly propaganda, but nonetheless, he wrote it and it's, you know, it's, it's his words. And that's something we don't have for a lot of ancient civilizations. And I think, and the fact that they built everything out of stone and Roman concrete, you know, preserved really well means that we have a lot of stuff. And in the course of my travels, I was able to see a lot of it, you know, much of it, which is still standing in some form. Uh, so that's very interesting. Uh, one of my favorite episodes was on chief Joe medicine crow. He was a, um, uh, a war chief for the crow Indians. And he, it, it, to be a war chief is not something that's given. It's something that's earned and you have to earn it in battle. And the things you must do is you have to, uh, touch an enemy in combat without killing him. You have to steal an enemy's weapon. You have to lead a raiding party and you have to steal a horse. He did those four things in world war II, including stealing a horse. Actually, he stole like several dozen horses. Um, and he lived to be 103 fascinating guy. And, uh, it was just a really interesting story. And it's just, it, it's one of the smaller episodes about, you know, one person. Um, but, uh, that's one that kind of always stuck with me. Now, I personally, I am not a member of the Completionist Club, and that is your affectionate name for those who have listened to every episode of the show, and I hope to one day get there. Uh, summer vacation will be a great time for me to work backwards. Um, but my question would be, now you don't do interviews as far as I can tell on your show or have guests, uh, but if you could have a guest on your show or speak to... Mm -hmm a historical figure or somebody relevant, who would you love to talk to? Or what would you talk about? Benjamin Franklin. Uh, and the reason is because he was a very intelligent guy and he lived right at the very beginning of maybe what we would call the modern era, right? He was there for the founding of the United States, but not much afterwards. He was involved in the very early discoveries in science, but didn't get to see a lot of the advances made in the 19th century. And I think he would just be a, a very interesting guy. And by all accounts, he was, you know, uh, a fun guy to be around. So uh, I, I, I don't have guests on the show, but I have opened the door at potentially in the future for having a guest host. Uh, the only problem is it would be someone that would want to write a 2000 word script or something. And there aren't a lot of people that, that want to do that. Right. Somebody who wants to write that term paper. <laughs> right. Uh AJ, do you have anything 
for Gary? I'm, I'm thinking about this and, you know, we want to bring podcasts to the students, right? So Chris, you have students who, who do a podcast show, but like, what if we were in a classroom? So a lot of teachers like to create, you know, projects where the podcast is the focus, but kids really kind of shy away from podcasts. Mm -hmm. What advice do you give to a student who the project is create a podcast on this topic? Where would you tell them to start? Like I have language arts teachers who, who use podcasting as a project. How do I get the students to start their podcast when they have no idea what a podcast is or care in the world to listen to a podcast? It's really multidisciplinary. So there's the subject on what they're going to talk about. That could be history or, or whatever. Uh, there's the performance aspect of it, which it might be something like uh, speech or language arts. There's a technical side to it, which is the recording and the audio and everything else. Um, I think that for something like podcasting, you just do it. And the first time they do it, it's going to suck. Because if, you know, if it, your first podcast has to be your worst, because if it isn't, you're not getting any better. But then you look at it and say, okay, well, uh, how could we improve? And if, and if they're open to the two and, and honest with like, yeah, the sound didn't too good, or maybe we could do this, um, that it, it really has to be an iterative process. I think if you're just doing one podcast, it's very difficult to, to get something from it. If you do a series of podcasts, and it doesn't have to be, you know, hundreds, um, then it's easier to, to kind of uh, figure something out and get down a system. And the other thing is figuring out a format. That was the other thing I did before I started. I thought about that quite a bit. And, uh, you know, some podcasts have the big voice of God radio announcer at the start. And I realized, you know, I, I should just do a cold open myself. I'll write that. And then I can repurpose the cold open on TikTok videos. Uh, it's, it's about 30 seconds, maybe 20 to 30 seconds. I can cut and paste that, use it on social media. Uh, and that's where, so I've got this format that I worked in picking a format. And if you, even though we don't realize it, every sitcom, every news program, everything we see on television has a format of, of, of how the show is done. Uh, Dan Harmon was showing the process behind Rick and Morty and how every episode is really the same. There's a story arc and a B story or whatever, and how it all comes together in the end. And it's this pro this, this framework that they fit all the stories into. And I think developing what that framework for a podcast is going to be is really constructive because once you figure out the framework, it's easier to then to plug in future episodes. <clears throat> Have I stumped you? I... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that because I think the biggest thing is like in, in a... And what I'm speaking of, it, it is a uh, a one-time project, right? So it's not like it's going to continue. I'm looking for something in my school that's going to be more of a flow and more of a, you know, a podcast that's going to last. So I, I appreciate that. And I mean, look, we, we do this all the time, but, you know, it's different when it's a student body and, and, and like I said, a group who have no idea what a podcast is or what it can actually do. So... I guess just, just there are a lot of kids that look at TikTok and YouTube and they want to be a content creator. They envision this as being some sort of dream job. And as a content creator, I can assure you, and it's a lot of work. And if you even read interviews with these, you know, YouTube and TikTok celebrities, they'll be the first to tell you it is an enormous amount of work. Uh, but you know, it, it is something I'm a firm believer in entrepreneurial journalism. I don't think that there's a, if you look at the big online media companies, they've almost all failed. The Buzzfeeds, the uh, Voxes, the Vices and whatever, they got all this venture financing and then they grew and got big offices and they, they couldn't support it. Now they're all being laying off people being sold, but one person outfits can do really well. There is a career path in that for people. It's not easy, but it can, it can be real well. And I think, you know, uh, new automobiles are starting to get rid of AM radio. So the idea of local community radio is going away, but I think there could be room for community podcasts where you have the freedom that radio doesn't give you. 
And I've talked to a lot of people in my community about that, about how we could possibly do this. You know, I live in the area in Wisconsin near um, Green Bay, not the biggest area, but I'd say in the, the general multi-county area, we have maybe half a million people. It can support multiple TV stations, multiple newspapers, multiple radios. Why couldn't it support a podcast? It certainly could. Uh, but people need to open up to it. And, you know, then there's also the business aspect of it as well, finding advertisers, things like that. So I think it's a worthwhile thing for, for kids to learn, actually, because whether it's a podcast or whether they're doing YouTube or something else, there's, um, there, there's, there's career potential in this that, uh, you know, they might very well be the people to be able to pull it off. Uh, real quick to to go back to AJ, you had asked your question, and uh, friend of the podcast Don Wetrick is watching, and uh, he sent this comment: "Easy start. Have a student interview a family member about a memory or an event from their family uh, that would get them into the flow of podcasting and interviewing, basically talking to somebody they're comfortable with." Uh, and Don agrees with Gary that it would that it would be bad, but hey, it's a trial run with a family member. Yeah. And maybe if it's a class project, you know, people produce different segments of the show and the end result is several episodes of the podcast produced by the class where different segments could be done by different people that are a couple of minutes long. You try to polish it up. Uh, that might be another way to do it as well. Uh, I've heard of some schools that have school podcasts where, you know, how they do the announcements or whatever in the morning, but they just do it in the form of a podcast. So that's me every morning. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'm a big fan of podcasting, uh, just sort of in general. So yeah, anything that can be done to promote it. Awesome. Uh, Gary, I want to thank you for taking time to be here on the show with us and talk about your podcast. And certainly those of you who are listening, if you are not subscribed to his podcast, at least go check it out. Everything, everywhere, daily. He's got great podcast <laughs> cover art and even better content once you click play. Now, Gary, Before I go, teacher, I should go talk about, um, oh, if I could. Yeah. The reason why Van Halen put a writer in their contract about brown M&Ms was yes, okay. because full, full their, <laughs> their contract, their, their concerts at the time were some of the most complicated ever. So they had all of these semi-trucks that came in and they had huge requirements in terms of electricity and in terms of the weight that the floor of the arena would have to support everything on. And because it was so technical, they put this in the contract to make sure that if they saw M&Ms with all the brown ones taken out, they knew the contract had been read. If there were no brown, if, if there were brown M&Ms or no M&Ms at all, then they knew that they had to go check all the electricity. And you can actually see photocopies of this contract floating around online. And David Lee Roth even talks about it. It's like, yeah, we did this and that that's how it worked. And there are other examples of celebrities that have done similar things where they wanted to have some sort of verification to make sure that uh, the contracts were checked. So yeah, it's not an urban myth. It's actually a true story. <clears throat> nice. I don't even think they put brown M&Ms in anymore. I think they got rid of them. I, I don't even know. <laughs> uh, Gary, for educators who want to connect with you, reach out to you, maybe have you speak to their class or uh, just go right to the source, what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you? Uh, you can email me, uh, Gary, at everything-everywhere.com. Uh, so you'll see the, uh, the URL here. Uh, just put my name, Gary, in front of it, and uh, you can reach me. Ooh, I'm sorry, Gary. I think you were frozen. Can you give us your contact again? Oh, it's Gary at everything-everywhere.com. Awesome. All right. Well, before we uh, end the episode, we're going to recommend some podcasts. Gary, I imagine you listen to podcasts, right? I do. Uh, not in the same way that I used to. I, I tend to listen mostly to, um, to podcasts about podcasting nowadays, which is kind of sad. But um, I've listened to, too. yeah, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But if you're um, looking for a recommendation, um, you know, a, a great history podcast and really kind of one of the first history podcasts. And even though it's been done for 12 years, 
uh, it's still one of the highest ranking shows is the history of Rome with Mike Duncan. Um, they did, I think he did like 120 episodes and then he followed it up with another podcast. that was just as successful, uh, the revolutions podcast, which he also just concluded a few months ago where he starts with the, uh, English Revolution slash Civil War. They got rid of Charles II, the American Revolution. They went to the French Revolution, which took a really long time. The various revolutions in Europe and then uh, the revolution in Haiti included, plus the Bolivarian revolutions in Latin America and then ending with the Russian Revolution. So that's a, a, that's a very long podcast, uh, hundreds of episodes, but very interesting as well. Excellent. AJ, do you have a recommendation this episode? I, I can give a recommendation. I, I can definitely do that. Do you want me to do it now? You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do All it right. Ahead. So I'll, I'll give a shout out to uh, a podcast I've been listening to. It's the Assistant Principal Podcast with uh, Frederick Buskey. And it's a, it's a great podcast. Don't let the name fool you. Um, it's not a focus on assistant principals. It's more of that leadership. So uh, what he does every every week, he has two podcasts. One is a podcast, usually an interview of some sort. And then later on, it's a summary of his emails that he sends out, you know, for, for the week. So he goes through his five emails and why he wrote them and what he was focused on and how it pertains to leadership. So it's uh, the assistant principal podcast with Frederick Buskey. And uh, that'd be my recommendation for right now. Nice. Uh, my recommendation, I'm uh, going to go back to uh, one of our favorites, the 5 a.m. Miracle. And I recently listened to Jeff's 487th episode which is titled the four apps you need to manage any project or achieve any goal and it's not as technology heavy as you might think but uh a good episode nonetheless so if you're also still listening to the 5 a.m miracle definitely go check out episode 487 all right i think that's going to do it for this episode aj gary did you have fun with us i had a blast thanks for having me Yes. Thanks for joining us, Gary. We really appreciate it. We will bring Gary back because we didn't really touch on it, but he's traveled all over the world. And as a teacher, sometimes you just want to get away from it all. So we're going to maybe bring Gary back for a uh, teacher travel episode for sure. <laughs> um, give us your thoughts and your feedback on the conversations we shared. Email us feedback at podcastpd.com or send us a voice message podcastpd.com slash feedback thank you for joining us for this episode we will be back on sunday may 21st with episode 128 say goodbye everybody goodbye everybody goodbye everybody <laughs>